Are you an aspiring clarinet player preparing for the Michigan All-State audition coming up? If so, I have got just the video for you. My name is Mingzhou Wang. I'm a clarinetist and professor at Michigan State University College of Music. Today, I want to go over quickly the two etudes that are required for the B-flat clarinet audition for Michigan All-State. A little disclaimer, I'm not affiliated with All-State organization and my opinions are mine alone, and they represent my decades of experience as musician and teacher. They are certainly not the one and only ways to play these pieces, but are suggestions aimed at helping you prepare. Let's go over the lyrical one first. Number 15, Adagio Pietoso. Before you start, of course you should know what this means. If you don't already know, look it up right now. I'll wait. Oh, got it? Good. I guess I could have just told you, but I think you will remember it better if you actually searched for it yourself. Now, you know that this is a lyrical, I would even say sorrowful piece of music. You will surely try to play it as expressive and vocal as you can. That presents a couple of challenges. First, we need to be able to play a lovely tone. Find a good read that would help you do that. Ask your teacher to help you if you don't know how to do that just yet. A nice read is not too difficult to play, but still has enough resilience to hold up on its own. When you start a piece, take a full breath, so you have plenty of air. The first three notes of the excerpt, starting in measure 13, are seemingly simple. Just three quarter notes in the middle of a staff. How hard could it be? But it is trickier than you think. Take care not to pinch so you can go in between the break easily, and not to break the legato. It is very easy to sound like this. Make sure you don't pinch at all. Really relax your jaw, keep your tongue high, and keep the airspeed fast. In measure 15, it is easy to give the high B an unintended accent since clarinet's higher notes are naturally with more projection. I would try to support the E immediately preceding the B a bit more and go over the two notes a few more times to get the balance just right. Oh, that's not so good. That's even worse. However, that's pretty good. I often tell my students that the left-hand clarion notes are the pickiest notes. They are most prone for issues. You should try and find out how to play them with ease. One thing I find is that they require a lot of reeds in general inside your mouthpiece to vibrate. So don't let the clarinet mouthpiece fall out of your mouth. Good practice tool is to try and play them without the register key. So, Perhaps you could, uh, if you're not very good at it, you can try with an open G first. To play the 12th above. And then once you are very good at it, you can move uh, semitone wise uh, lower. Once you can do that really well, you can then put it to practice. And remember what you did when you are not using your register key. Take care of the last notes of the phrases, those notes at the end of a slur, making sure that you don't cut them too short. I would say that this is especially true for the first note of measures 26 and 28, because you will see that they are in a long crescendo. Intensity is building here, if you stop the air support and cut the notes short, you will lose the powerful increase of intensity that the music requires. Playing this etude well, air support is the key. Well, air support is key to play the clarinet in general. Keep pushing the air through and don't lose your volume too soon at places where dim is marked. Remember, diminuendo is the beginning of decreasing volume, which means where it's marked, it is still the loudest point.
enjoy the video so far, please like and subscribe. Now, move on to the next A2, number four, simply marked Allegro. This is a fun one, isn't it? Obviously, this one is a test for your articulation. Try to practice your tongue in so that you sound full and resonant. I often tell my students to not worry about keeping the staccato notes short. Since the speed of the etude is already fairly quick, the notes are short enough. If you try to make them even shorter, you end up working your tongue twice as hard, and not only will the 16th notes not sound full, you will also slow down your speed. Unlike string instruments, or piano, or the human voice, when we cut the notes short on our clarinets, we lose the resonance because we simply do not have the resonating chamber that is built in to the instruments. So we kind of have to create a little resonant here. Something like this. And perhaps not like that. To me, that doesn't sound quite good. Starting measure 6, we have this long passage with two no slurs. This passage is tricky because we're forced to move our fingers and tongue at different times. We are used to move them together. So if you're not careful, you end up sounding something like this. <laughs> um, uh, so you just have to make sure you practice slow and perhaps lengthen the first note of each two note group so that you really feel the notes under your fingers before you move on to the next one. We also have the survival instinct that is to push the next key. We often feel nervous when our fingers are not on the clarinet. So subconsciously, we just want to keep pushing buttons, right? Uh, perhaps we're a little afraid that the clarinet might fall out of our hands. So tell yourself not to worry. Enjoy the suspended feeling and hear the notes before you move on. Make sure you don't exaggerate the two note slurs too much. Otherwise, it might sound a bit comical. The first two notes in measure six also present the register issues as we move from a low clarion note to a high clarion note as I mentioned earlier for number 15. Here it is a good idea to keep the clarinet mouthpiece in your mouth by using your hand and your thumb to push the instrument up so that you're not pressing on your reed and preventing it from vibrating freely. Finally, the question of breathing. I have had many students ask me how and where to breathe in this etude. The most ideal would be to breathe where there is a rest. The etude is written in such a way that you should with enough experience and practice, be able to play from the beginning to the first note of measure 12, which is the longest phrase without a break in this etude, all in one breath. Every young clarinet player can do just that yet. Not to mention when you have to play a little slower, your read is not the most ideal, and when you are nervous, your breath will also not last you very long. Uh, so here are a couple of other solutions. You can squeeze in a breath, but the trick is to make it sound musical and not out of time. This will require you to have a good feel for the timing. <laughs> Or, you simply drop one sixteenth note in order to breathe, like this. Of course, this is not perhaps the most ideal, but you should not feel too bad about it. Since you are still growing as a musician, play expressively and with good taste, and I think whoever is listening will be impressed.
enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. See you next time.